G'day folks. Oh, it's one of them uh, nice little warm afternoons. Just thought I'd give you a bit of an update. Had some goodies come in, or one particularly important one, which we'll get onto in a second. But yeah, very busy at work at the moment, so I don't expect too much on the weekends. Um, doing five days a week essentially. Uh, it's all good work though. I mean, we just got jobs pouring in and just not enough manpower. I mean, we've got four people in the machine shop and just can't keep up at the moment. Things could be tidied up a bit better though. I mean, there's a bit too much uh, chin wagging going on at the moment, but what do you do? You've got four people, three people who really know each other really well, so you're going to get that. But just making processes and things efficient is tricky. <laughs> it's all in the front of the job. So, yeah, working stuff out at work, not a lot going on here. I'm usually too tired to be bothered doing anything, but I guess since my new toy came in and Jay the Aussie dropped some TVs off last night, I'm going to have a look at one of those, and uh, we'll have a look at this. Or at least a little bit anyway, I'm going to have a play around with it later. I did try a video, just a ramble video like this one, but again, it's an MOV file, which I don't have anything to run. I know QuickTime runs it, but I need something that'll edit them and I need to be able to incorporate MOV files into the existing H.262 or whatever it is files from this camera, the two TZ10 Lumix. Something big passing overhead. <laughs> um, not a bad little camera. Got extra battery and case and all that stuff with it. 32 gig Sanden or SanDisk uh, SD card. So yeah, this thing can do up to a thousand frames a second high speed uh, but of course you'd need very good lighting for that apparently I need incandescent lighting not uh, fluorescent lighting so I'm gonna have to get some stage lights off Brad V8 Jagnut he had quite a few floating around I think he's still got some floating around for me but we'll have to work on that one soon um, yeah I just got to work out how to use it properly that's all I'm sure a few people have used them before and might have some tips and tricks on mainly just stationary mounting it's gonna be stationary mounted off to the side or in front of an experiment in behind glass and it's going to be filming the results in high speed so there's a bit of trickiness it's a very basic entry level HS camera uh, if you want to get a really good one you're looking at like twenty thousand dollars for a really good one but for the sake of four hundred bucks for the package or just under four hundred bucks it was worth it and it, if failing everything it's still a good little HD mini cam so even if the high speed thing doesn't work out it's still a good replacement or at least companion for my uh, Panasonic Lumix TZ10 so yeah that should work out quite well but I want a program which can incorporate MOV files and MT2S and all these other ones together into the same movie without having to go through too many uh, format changes and things so yeah anyway I've got to move shuffle some stuff around but I've got a uh, boxes of bits from work um, we just had a massive brutal clean out and just threw out heaps of junk so there's old motors and UHMWPE bits annuluses annuli I guess you'd call them these things it's just machined UHMW more just ratty old offcuts and things chain motors motor compartments gear speed reducers all that good stuff plastic compartments well one one plastic box which is ratty as hell but doesn't matter and a spare box lid various other stuff gear motors that sort of thing limit a couple of old limit switch boxes um, stuff that I can't show you and motor compartments from work um, it's all proprietary stuff I suppose even as old it's as old as the ages I mean the technology is um, but I'm not going to show you just in case someone recognises it. But we've got some nice chain, stainless steel. Of course, it's oxidised, being in chlorinated water, but the links themselves, the link pins aren't rusted out, so that should be good. That's also stainless. I've got sprockets to suit them. Um, just random bits of crap, really. There's a limit box that's been flooded, but can be repaired. A lot of this stuff's flood damage or um, pool overfilled, like the uh, overflow drain obstructs and water level gets high enough to uh, 
fully immerse the motor compartment and of course it's going to find a way in somewhere even if it's just weeping in through the proximity sensor that the um, trip arm operates just weeping in through the casing of the prox sensor that's happened before um, so yeah a lot of this stuff's right at waterline and it's all DC it's all 24 volt DC but yeah water takes out quite a lot of equipment and it's generally not worth repair or not reliable enough after it's repaired to be put back into service so it goes in the bin but this thing I primed the pump and everything the pump already had liquid in it so unless it's actually seized it should still run I've got a feeling it's going to be the um, like as a few people suggested the CMOS battery and the uh, that little Dallas chip or something like that so I'm going to get another battery for it or at least test the one that's in there and go from there but I have primed the system I've got bottles of MEK so I filled that up with almost a litre of MEK that one there I've churned it up and got rid of the um, the ink had gone a bit coagulated over storage but it seems to have come good if not too diluted it's too diluted to use but at least uh, it can pass through the system safely so yeah not too much harm should have been done by it but it's just a matter of clearing every single one of those little Teflon lines it's a very time consuming and messy process I've still got white pigment on my fingers uh, definitely got to get some gloves for this one but yeah it should work again uh, as long as I sort the boot up problem and holding the power buttons or whatever just doesn't do anything either the 10 second thing didn't work uh, there's no power button as such it's just the main switch on the back and then the start button I guess but nothing happens so I can't force it to boot up but anyway it'll do something uh, I've got a LG plasma outside from J the Aussie uh, it's the same as the one that I nuked the hell out of a while ago, so I still got all the boards out of that one. Now the one that I nuked had a bad PDP module or and or buffer, and I guess you call it the plasma equivalent of a T-Con board. Um, that was pretty bad on it. As soon as you start poking any of those areas or the chip on film ribbons on the panel, everything went horribly wrong. So that's why that one got nuked, but I've still got the power supply and things which, which will fit the other TV. So I should get another good standard def plasma working, uh, which would be good for a change, considering how many I've been canning. But then most people do these days, it's just not worth it. Unless you've got boards sitting on the shelf doing nothing. And that's what I like about collecting plasma boards. Uh, yeah, anyway, I guess the last question of the day is, are the uh, DVD-ROM drives for the Xbox 360 actually coded to the console? See, I was telling Jay the Aussie I'm sending the DVD drive from this one to a subscriber in the States but he said that they're coded to the board and it won't work so yeah I could probably just look this up on Google and I probably will anyway but I don't know what are your opinions can you uncode them if they are can they be used to a DVD drive be used with any other console main board or are they completely locked out and screwed as Microsoft diddled everyone on it so yeah that's about all for today uh, like I said before, very busy at work, so don't expect too much on the Friday, Saturday. Uh, exhaustion does set in after a while, but it's not usually because of what I'm doing here. It's because of actual work where you're just flat out. Head down, ass up, get your head in the job and do it. Um, yeah. But that's good. Good work ethic. Like I said, like most people realise, I'm pretty much workaholic. <laughs> Anything to do with fixing, building, repairing, and just general labour in general... Uh, it's pretty much my thing. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. And uh, as you can see, this place is never tidy. All my efforts were in vain. <laughs> it total vain. There's just stuff everywhere. So, that's pretty much how it's going to stay. I'll at least make an effort to sort the tools out. But when it comes to equipment and stuff, it's just going to end up everywhere anyway. Until I get a bigger shed and some pallet racking and all that sort of stuff that I can fill up with more stuff. Wonderful. Anyway, that's enough. Thanks for watching. Any tips on the camera would be appreciated, the new one, and the uh, Xbox thing. So, yeah. See you later.